For the inquisitive diver. Welcome back, dive buddies. And before we crack on with part two of Dan Johnson's episode, I want to give you an amazing opportunity to join me on an unforgettable nomadic scuba adventure diving in the Galapagos this July. I'm heading up a week of exceptional diving on board the Galapagos Master and hitting all of those world famous dive sites. So if you're interested in snapping up one of those last remaining spots, hit me up via WhatsApp or follow the links in the show notes for an unbelievable adventure at an even more unbelievable price. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a, a, a name of an island here, and I'm going to edit it out, so sorry, listeners, you're not going li- to hear it. Um, Dan, are you talking around... Yes. Is that the location you're talking? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, that's, yeah. so we normally go out... So if you're looking at the uh, map there, or the charts there, mm-hmm. that, that is sort of nautical miles further out than what we generally go diving and yep. uh i said it's untouched the uh, the island itself used to be populated but in the 1800s it was wiped out by smallpox and so uh, the locals believe it's sort of a mass of light, a ghost island and yeah. uh no, no one lives there and yeah. uh i have permission to dive it from the local landowner uh mm-hmm. yeah and the diving that we've been finding out there's just been so far it's been really, really good. Uh, when yeah, when do you I'm when do you plan to super excited? When, when, when do you plan to go back out there? Seriously. Uh, uh, I've got two charters which or two itineraries put together. One is in uh, oh hold on, I'd have to pull that up. Give me two seconds, Matt. No worries. One, so I can see how the islands is because obviously uh, with the uh, weather and everything and the water temperature, fish life mm. and everything changes there. So uh, yeah. there we are. Uh, so we've got the, uh, in 2024, uh, early June. Okay. And then uh, late October. So the early June one, that's that's the first one, or the yep. the next time you're going to be going. There. Yeah, um, and I've Officially. got to ask, do they, Yeah, do the? I mean, this is me just thinking back to Tufi, and there's a big difference in mileage between Tufi and where we're talking about. But I'm assuming that area of the the sea doesn't get affected by the trade winds at that time of year, then. No, no, these are okay. doldrums. So. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm pretty sure, uh, because I know Tufi has a different wet season to what we do in uh, Kimby. Uh, mm. but... Yeah, because our, our, our shitty kind of conditions where people can't get out on the reefs properly is kind of uh, end of March into April and then right the way through to maybe September, October time. Yeah, which is ridiculous because our are doldrums. Yeah. So flat as a pancake... Uh, that's our signatory itinerary. That's our busiest time of year. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, you know, you could fart in a bathtub and get more <laughs> wave action. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as I said, it's a mill pond. It's gorgeous. Um, you know, the weather's Happy great. Days. Yeah, our mid-year itinerary, uh, uh, July, August, uh, they're our windy season, so that's why we run up to Rabal. Uh, mm. And protect ourselves from the southeasterly trade winds, because uh, okay. that's what time they come through there. Is there anyone booked on for that June twenty twenty four yet? No, it's a full boat charter. That's why I've been able to uh, do it. So, because we put our uh, schedules out a couple of years in advance, or you know, we're getting mm. people hassling us for twenty twenty six and twenty twenty seven at the moment. Mm. Uh, you know, so we've got to try and work out a itinerary beforehand uh, for yeah. everything. But then I sit there and I have all these great ideas as I'm sat on the boat going, oh, <laughs> I wonder what's there, going through the charts and going, oh, that looks great. That could yeah. be phenomenal. Uh, yeah. So I then look through, work out what I've got. So as I said, 
we will hopefully open up some more in 2025, but uh, 2023 mm. is, as I said, we're very busy because we've uh, brought forward all the bookings from the last two and a half years. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I only have two two charters which aren't fully booked uh, for the signatory time, and that's why I'm doing the uh, We Twos and Beyond there too. Yeah. Mate, uh, to mate put, put a... Put a pencil on that one. How long's the trip? Four, five, uh, six, seven. Keep going. That's a nine day Eight, trip. Nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> nine. Nine day trip, that one. Nine nine day trip. You yeah. know, all seriousness, we'll we'll talk after the show, but in all seriousness, I reckon we should do that as a scuba goat charter. Not a problem. If we're gonna go diving. exploring, that's what that's what I fucking love about diving is going out yep. and diving somewhere that no one else has ever dived before and just you and me both yeah, yeah you and me both that and would be phenomenal yeah as i said we'll do we'll do the start and the end of the trip will be pretty much the same but as i said i'm looking for a four day uh investigation to mm. the middle of nowhere and beyond yeah you know yeah i think it's, it's got to be done man yeah yeah definitely 100%. Mm. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll talk after the show. <laughs> All right. We'll pencil that one in. Uh, yeah. yeah, we will def- definitely have to talk about that one because hopefully when I'm in the uh, dust at the boot show, uh, I'm going to be filling up a lot of these slots for 2024. So we'll get you in there. Oh, fucking hell. And boots this month, isn't it? Uh, I leave on Friday. Holy shit. For those who... For those of you who don't know what dad is or listening to it later, I see 19th of uh, January, I think it starts, 21st of yeah. January to the 29th of January. Well, all being well, I'll put this episode next Monday, so it'll be out before boot. Um, yeah. But if you if, if you listen to this and go to boot and you want to go on the trip in June to uh, some hidden reefs that have never been dived before, um, tough shit, I've got the boat. <laughs> 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 don't, don't bother mincing your words, uh, mate. You know, say it how it is. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so yeah. uh, getting back on track. So that's the, you know, uh, exploratory element of that area. Um, are you, is there anywhere else you're looking at? Several places, but I, I, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. you know? uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as I said, we're, we're, we're doing the uh, South Coast, which is newer, which Alan's been opening up for several years. I would actually like to do the sort of uh, West Coast of New Britain, uh, up around Combi area, Gloucester. So if you have a... Uh, Combi. So, yeah. Well, not so much Combi, uh, Gloucester. So on the tip of uh, the West tip of um, of New Britain uh, in between Siasi and New Britain and you've also got uh, Tintin I, I, Tintin little island there I've been asked to go and dive um, I'm looking I can't see bear with me um, I've got Umboy Island and Long Island yes uh, Sakar Umbo- Island Oh, Gloucester, Gloucester, I've got it. Yep. So yep. there's a there's a large island off the uh, side there uh, called Siassi, uh, locally, yep. and then just below that, Long Island is uh, there's a different local name for it as there always is. Uh, but in between those islands and the mainland, unless you've got a current up to date navigational chart. There are thousands of uh, bombies and pinnacles which run through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking on uh, Google layers, and you can see the undulations there. There's got to be so much. And that's got, oh, that's got a fair bit oh, of water going through there as well, eh? Oh, yeah. Huge amounts of water going through there. Um, I... I, I've actually I've just purchased myself a forward uh, forward view uh, sonar so that okay. I can uh, pick up reefs and fish before I hit them. 
yeah, which is always uh, an advantage what's underneath me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, although it, although it's not the um, uh, what do they call it? Um, although it's not the three D, it's a three D imaging and mapping of the ocean's floor uh, with this mm. little thing that I've got. Uh, this little sonar, forward facing sonar. Uh, it won't give photogrammetry. me the... <laughs> photogrammetry. Yes! That's it. You, you, you Googled it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to work that one out earlier for those of you who don't yeah. remember. Ah, I'm just fine. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Uh, That's all right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Effort. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, yeah. So, I'm look. I would love to be able to get round there and to uh, dive up and down that channel uh, again. I think that could hold something special. Uh, yeah. The biggest problem for that is getting there at the right time of year. Uh, you can get some big winds through there, some bits of sea going across over to land and everything, and Again, uh, having to go there, it's a lot of work whenever you go into a new area because the traditional landowners, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, every place we mm. dive, we pay uh, pay the landowners for the privilege um, yeah. and to keep everything friendly. Uh, so <laughs> if you're going to a new area, you have to find the right person not just the first person who makes it out to your boat with their hand out. Because <laughs> uh, you pay the wrong person. Oh, boy. And if there's two villages looking over the same reef, you generally have to leave that one alone because that can start arguments uh, between the villages. And of course, you don't yeah. want to uh, do anything like that there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so no, uh, through that channel there, It'd be uh, one of my little marks that I'd like to go and explore. Mm, um, mm. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's. Um, I mean, you picked up on a good point there that we've got to, you know, be respectful and pay the landowners. And we did the same with when I when I um, joined Taka and we went up into the Star Reefs and those locations and visit the right villages and you know, pay a bit of. Well, the currency is useless. It was all about the food, so rice and yeah. And, you know, grains, yep. that kind of stuff. Very um, much. But being, but being but respectful. So it's it's not really something that, you know, um, what I don't want to do is is kind of um, uh, over-dramatise it so that people that are a bit apprehensive about Papua New Guinea because of horror stories, <sighs> that it's going to be another fear factor. And it, it's not. It's actually no, a great not at experience. All. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when, when people come out and visit the boat, they rock up in their little dugout canoes. They come out, they trade with fresh vegetables, and we give them rice and packets of noodles for, for, and mm -hmm. salt, of all things. Yeah. That's what yeah. they want, and that's what we <laughs> trade with. And they bring us these beautiful fresh vegetables, and they, you'll see all the kids come out in the dugouts, and they'll paddle through the central of the hull and everything on the boat and they just play and it's a fantastic experience and mm. it's completely safe um yeah. and yeah. it adds it adds to a trip uh, for those people who sit there and go to my gov travel app uh, you'll see obviously 90% of the countries in the world are marked red at the moment the smart yeah. traveler app um it's, but yet they don't have New York marked down as a red place. You know, yeah. you walk down the wrong street there, you're going to get mugged, whatever. Um, mm. It's just about being smart. And uh, yeah, there's no more trouble in Papua New Guinea than there is in Australia. It's, they just like to publicize it more to keep the uh, tourists in their own country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um, it is an experience, you know, and it's um, it's an experience that so I've I've never had the same experience as I've ever had in Papua New Guinea, with regards to the people. the the uh, The amount of friendliness that comes from people that haven't seen, you know, I've I've had kids 
on a dugout canoe with mum and dad, crying in fear because they've seen a white guy and they think he's a ghost and it's me. I'm like, oh yeah, have some chocolate, you know. <laughs> but it it adds to everything's the better. <laughs> yeah. And yet yeah. and yet four years later when I go back to the same village and the same kid remembers who you are and they come up to you and give you a big hug. You're like, oh, fuck yeah. yeah. This is a bit different from last time. It's brilliant. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. It it is it is truly amazing experience. Uh, one of the things that I do up there um, on the way to islands, there, although Papua New Guinea is very rich in uh, natural resources, a lot of the money doesn't trickle down from the governments uh, in mm. healthcare and education. It's severely lacking. Uh, one of the uh, local villages uh, where we dive around, I've been diving around for many years. Uh, there's a beautiful school there and a church. We often go up and visit them and uh, I do a donation, pass a hat round at the end of it type of thing. And we've been filling their library with books, uh, getting soccer balls. I mean, we, we went out one day, they've got plastic bags wrapped up with a bit of tape and that's what they were playing their school football uh, competition with. Uh, so mm. we went out and bought them footballs and yeah. the children, the kids there are very, very shy at the beginning, but they'll come over, they'll take your hand and you'll have the most marvelous conversation. They'll show you around, you'll laugh, uh, you'll be laughing, giggling the afternoon away and, uh, yeah. they are beautiful people. Um, yeah. yeah, there's no, no other place like it in the world. And mm. Mm. so so we do our little bits. Yeah, and it's awesome. I can't wait to get back there. Um, yeah. Mm. Um, no, I'll see okay, you in so, June. Yeah, yeah, June 2024, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing, we're, doing, we're doing Galapagos this year, so we need a, we need a biggie for next year, so it's all good. <laughs> we'll be as big as you need us. Yeah, awesome. Um, okay, so... Um, I mean, if if people are listening to this and they're not enticed to go to Papua New Guinea already, then, well, you're barking and you're not a you're not yeah. a diver. Um, but um, you need your head red. In yeah, in in your opinion, Dan, what's the what's the prime reason that anyone should visit Papua New Guinea to go diving? The prime reason to go diving is the un touched reefs the uh it, it's to just pick one reason is very difficult because it's it's a whole experience um mm. from beautiful resorts to short boat trips uh to phenomenal diving warm water oh you get people come along with five mil wetsuits. So you just laugh at them. You say, right. Uh, they say, oh, but I get really cold. It's like, okay, but you'll also get really pissed off if you're putting that wetsuit on four times a day. <laughs> normally, normally by dive two, I've convinced everyone to put on a pair of shorts, a rashie, and just go natural. Uh, yeah. Take a few weights off and enjoy the diving. Um the photography over there is amazing from the macro to the wide angle. Uh, in just to pinpoint one thing is impossible. It is. Yeah. I, I Sorry, 100% agree. Absolutely impossible. Yeah. Bit of a trick it, question. The <laughs> Papua New Guinea is so, so big, you can go wreck diving in Rabaul, you can go and see the manta rays in Millen Bay, you can go and see pristine reefs in Kimby Bay, frogfish in everywhere, Millen to yeah. Rapal <laughs> to Kimby to uh, black volcanic sands, muck diving off its head, and generally no rubbish in the water. Yeah. It yes. is amazingly void clean uh I, yeah. I worked in the solomons for two years and i'm i don't want to bad mouth the solomons by any stretch of the imagination but uh there's got to be some current which runs through there which pulls a lot of plastic into the uh environment 
In fact, I, I think you should edit this bit out because, you know, and it was one of the things I did notice when I was there, you know, is the amount of plastic. Uh, we generally don't have that. You know, you mm. very rarely see a plastic bag floating past you anywhere in Papua New Guinea. Um, mm. It's great, you know. To be honest, I'm, yeah. I'm actually no, really finding it difficult to. I can't think of any. I can't think of any dives off the top, off the top of my head where I've ever seen rubbish in the water in Papua New Guinea. And I know I was only there for eleven a, months, a but few I've of them up every dives. day four or five times yeah. a day. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah you're gonna get so if you join. Yeah, you jump in at a port or something, you're gonna get rubbish for sure. But um, right out in the open ocean, yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, let's let's try, um, let's try the questions, uh, the, the questions that have uh, been okay, uh, put together for season four. Now, what I'm gonna do, ladies and gents, is each episode uh, throughout this year's season. Um, I've formulated just 10 questions. Some have come in from people through Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and the like. Uh, but the same 10 questions are going to be asked of every guest. And uh, let's just see what they come up with. Eh? Question one, how do you describe your job as an owner, stroke captain, stroke diver, stroke man loving his life to people who are not familiar with your activity? Exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> exciting. Uh, there is no other job in the world that I would rather be doing. Um, it's amazing. I can, every day is an adventure, you know. So, I think it's the same. That's, that's the perfect reason to go diving on your boat when you're loving life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, question two. Um, can you share a memorable diving experience that stands out to you as the best you've ever had? Yes, I can, actually. Uh, that would be my fourth open water dive ever. Okay. Uh, and so, why? first time I ever saw a whale shark. Oh, get out of it. <laughs> In Kotel, <laughs> where I did my open water, fourth open water dive. I think it was Champon Pinnacles. Uh, we had a whale shark swim through. And, of course, I thought that you would see them on every single dive that you would ever go on, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd only Mate, done it I... four times. That's a 25% <laughs> hit rate. Mate, I, I, the reason I'm laughing is that our mutual friend, you guys used to work together, Adam. Yep. Um, he was on his fifth dive, his, first, his very first fun dive after doing his open water on Koh Tao with an instructor mate of mine and I was in the water as a dive master leading some guests and he saw his first whale shark at Jump on Pinnacle. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I did not know that Adam shared the same experience with me. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's brilliant, fantastic. brilliant. Yeah. Okay, question three. If someone wanted to pursue a career similar to yours in diving, conservation or science, what advice would you give them? Start with a lot of money. <laughs> uh, the quickest way to become rich in diving or to become a millionaire in diving is to start with three million uh, and very shortly <laughs> you'll have a million uh, <laughs> if you want to pursue a career in diving um, it's my advice would be go Go to somewhere that you love and don't get stuck in sort of uh, doing intros every single day if that's not what you like. Uh, mm. I've, I've had lots of different uh, periods of my dive instructing um, career uh, from small business owner to... Uh, instructor teaching full-time classes to doing intros thousands of intros off boats to working on the dive liverboards uh yeah. around the world and then to owning my own or to dive manager and then to owning my own dive liverboard um find the niche that suits you and that yeah. makes you happy because it's not an easy job you work very long hours 
for very little money, but the life experience is epic um, beyond and is more rewarding than I believe any other job is out there. Well said, sir. Well said. Um, question four. If you could change anything about the diving industry or scuba diving in general, what would it be? I'd put more love into the world. Um, it's As a business, uh, it's very cutthroat. Uh, yeah. It really is. Uh, there's, you know, very people are very protective over their area. There's only a finite uh, divers traveling the world and can go to these areas. Um, it would be nice if everyone could just play nicely and respect each other. Yeah, just a bit more respect so, to uh, other business owners. And uh, as we have in Papua New Guinea, we're very lucky with the Papua New Guinean Dive Association. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes us all play very nicely. Good, good. Right, question five. And what are your thoughts on ways to minimize human impact on the oceans? Stop making plastic bags. Every time you go <laughs> to the supermarket, guys, Take your own. Done. Okay, question number six. Has your passion for diving or the industry itself changed over time? And if so, how? Yes, my diving has, uh, my attitude towards diving has changed uh, over the years. Um, I remember probably six, seven years ago, I wouldn't get in the water without a camera. Mm. Uh, I, I, felt that I'd done that many dives, I'd taught that many people, and I wanted a new challenge. Uh, and I challenged myself by becoming an underwater photographer. And mm. as anyone who's ever taken a camera underwater can tell you, it's not as easy as taking a picture of a tree on the land. And so I got really fixated, and I wouldn't enjoy my dive unless I had my camera with me. Yeah, And so I put myself in that photographer category and just see it all the time on the boat. People just don't enjoy their dive if they don't have their camera with them, if they've had a problem with it, a ring's gone, a hair, a piece of sand's flooded it or something like that. You know how mm. easily it's done. Uh, and mm. then they sit on the boat and just mope. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I traveled Africa with my flaming camera and only took it in the water half a dozen times. <laughs> and, and it's a big setup, you know, double handles, yeah. two, three bloody stripes off it, all the rest of it. And none of it's just none of this new compact stuff that they have nowadays, which seems to do a much better job. Um, mm. And I, I worked my way out of that. And it's been the best thing for me. Because jumping in the water uh, now for me is very much back to basics. I go down there and just to look at the fish and the yeah. coral, and I take in so much more. So I no longer consider myself a photographer by any stretch of the imagination. I jump in the water, I'll blow bubbles for 45 minutes, and I am in my happy place. It's yeah. zen to me yeah. uh, I'm surrounded by some of the most amazing scenery in the world and you only capture that much of it through mm. a viewfinder and you miss everything else which is going on around you Yeah. and so that's how my diving has changed and I, I enjoy diving a lot more than I did when I was a photographer uh, mm. Yeah, so I'd say that's the way my diving has changed. Um, Fair one. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Can, I can feel you on that one. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those that carries a big-ass camera as well, and I always have to yep. have my camera with me on a dive. But on occasion, like we've just come back from um, Nusa Panita, and on occasion I've gone in the water and I've, I don't know, forgot to take a lens cap off or release the auto <laughs> shit around, whatever. Uh, and you think, oh, fucking hell, I've just got to drag this thing around now. And yep. I've really enjoyed the dive because it's just been, you know, a lump that I've been yeah. carrying around and not focusing on. So I yeah. completely understand where you're coming from there, mate. 
Yeah, yeah. As I said, it's revolutionised my diving. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I love photographers. I think you guys are awesome. And uh, we have awesome photography. But put it down. Leave it on the boat yeah. for a couple of dives and just go out and enjoy the scenery. Mm. Take mental pictures like we used to, you know? That's the, that's the best pictures in the world, isn't it? The ones in the yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean... I still remember, for example, how many people remember phone numbers these days because no we have mobile phones. No one remembers them. But as a mm. kid, before a mobile phone, I still remember my very first phone number, uh, yeah. which was the, the landline. And I remember my friend's yeah. phone number and my neighbor's <laughs> phone number and et cetera, et cetera. And we did this with our heads. And I see yeah. Yeah, so I put the you had, your, down. you had your, your top five phone numbers that you were going to call if you were in the shit, and you had your one ten pence for using the yep. phone box because no one had a mobile phone. You had to find a phone box. <laughs> yeah, I had to find a phone box, a little red box, you know. Yeah, very much. Uh, and to try to try and find one which didn't smell like pee around my area was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten uh, pence. Don't right. spend it on sweets. Moving on. Yeah. Um, number seven, um, is there a particular conservation effort that you are particularly passionate about? And if so, which one and why? Oh, I, I like turtles. Um, mm -hmm. You know, listening's doing a great job of uh, breeding turtles um, and releasing them uh down the concept islands they also have turtle rehabilitation there uh i believe it's a great part of the ecosystem uh, because of human influence uh mm. they are on the decline um from a fantastic food source uh i still have a very good recipe for one uh in my survival at sea book uh they tell you if you can catch one it's a great way to survive uh mm. in a life raft so uh, still customary food in Australia uh, through the Torres Strait Islands uh, and still a food source in Papua New Guinea uh, yeah. as well. So, and the other thing is uh, they eat plastic as the numbers are dwindling all around the world. Uh, I think it's something that we need to focus quite heavily on to keep this part of the uh, ecosystem moving. Here, here. Um, um, Ange, Ange from Lissanung is coming on the show. Um, she was. Uh, we were meant to be chatting the other day, but she's got malaria at the moment, so not feeling too good. Um, but she'll be coming on the show to talk all about the excellent work that they're doing at Lissanung there with the turtle sanctuaries. Yeah, yeah they are doing a very good job up there with it. Mm. Um, okay, number eight. Of the many safety procedures we have in the industry, if you had to choose one as the most important, what would it be? buddy system mm -hmm. yeah uh for many years i'd swim around and say yes my camera is my buddy mm -hmm. my camera never really helped me out of uh dodgy situations it got me in a few dodgy situations as many people will tell you who carry cameras um uh, you know buddy system's a good system um yeah. it's good to die for a friend uh something goes wrong you've always got air there's always yeah. someone there who can help you uh, or at least raise the alarm. So the buddy system would be probably the most important safety system uh, for me in the diving world. Gotcha. And there's a, there's a lot of people that kind of forget that nowadays. You see them stretching out and the buddies become 15, 20 metres away. Well, if you've just breathed out and there's nothing left in your tank, it's a long way to swim when there's no air in there and no oxygen. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Um, okay, number nine. Um, uh, what are your top five bucket list destinations? And you can't say Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can, can I say small parts of Papua New Guinea? Uh, no, okay. Um, I'll, I'll let you have list. two. <laughs> nah. Well, I've dived a lot of Papua New Guinea and Obviously, it's high on a lot of people's bucket lists, and uh, it would still be on mine, except I've 
I'm there and I'm doing it. So for me, probably the place I would like to get in the water the most would be the Bikini Atoll. Uh, oh, yeah. I I like a bit of wreck diving. I've already done Truck Lagoon, so that's obviously off the bucket list. Uh, I've done the Solomons, which has phenomenal wrecks through there. Uh, and I've done Papua New Guinea, the wrecks there. So Bikini is the place I would really like to go and uh, see where they detonated and sunk the fleet. Um, yeah, I would even go out and do a rebreather course for that one. Uh, <laughs> the only way you get me diving on those things, I tell you. But yeah, yeah. I would do that for the Bikini Atoll. Uh, Got to be Rajaram. Pat's always in there for everybody. The Forgotten Islands. Uh, mm-hmm. I know they do the transits up and down uh, there. That w- I'd like to see why why people say it's as good as Papua New Guinea. Some people even say it's better. I can't believe it. But I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I'm on the fence on that one, mate. I've done both, and I'm yeah. really, really on the fence. Um, I don't. I don't believe I've seen the best of Raja, um, and I don't believe I've seen the best of Papua New Guinea. But I've seen a lot of Papua New Guinea, and Raja's got to step the game up if they're going to overtake P and G for me. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, all honesty. Know, yeah, yeah. No, so I want to go and see what the competition's offering, and uh, mm. yeah, why why people would spend three days on a plane to get there. <laughs> 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 Instead of a day out of Australia to Papua New Guinea, but anyway, there you yep. go. Um, sardine run uh, in South Africa. Get out of it! It's fucking amazing. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, what's his name? Amos Na- Nachos. Na- Nachos does big fish uh, expeditions. Uh, it's famous in his own lunchtime. Uh, he runs uh, a lot of the sardine runs charters over there and he's always sending emails through to us and it is something that I would love to go and see being a, being that bait bull and mm. just to see everything from anything to everything come through and hit it it would be yeah. amazing yeah. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he does a fantastic job, but if you end up deciding to possibly go to South Africa to do the sardine run, hit me up first, and I'll put you ah. in touch with Debbie Smith and Rob Nettleton, who own, um, what the bloody hell do they call it? Off- Offshore Africa, out of Port St. John's. And um, okay. this is who I was setting up expeditions with, and then COVID hit. I met them when I was out there ah. doing the sardine run in Port St. John's. And Debbie... Um, and Rob are just, they're the top of their game. You, you just can't get better divers and people. Um, behind the mass team, they went, well, they've been with Debbie, Debs and Rob now uh, twice. Um, phenomenal people. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, so I'll give you those. In fact, I'll send you the details. Just compare them to whoever you want to go with because for me, they're up here. You know, they're, yep. they're up there. Yeah, I'll bomb. quite happily take that. Uh, I'll quite happily take that recommendation. Yep. Yeah. Uh, be very. Yes. Yeah, said I'll get there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'll do it. Um, all right. Next one. Ah, uh, Galapagos, I suppose. Uh, I lived in Mexico for fourteen, fifteen months, and I never got to the other side, ah. literally, of the country. And it's got to be Darwin Wolf. Uh, possibly the only way you get me in a dry suit again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't actually need the dry suit. I come from thirty-two degree water. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was actually amazed, mate. We, we've we've got um, the expedition which was initially for twenty twenty, and then COVID obviously hit, so it's been delayed and delayed. But we're going this July, and there's still a couple of spaces left on it. I was amazed, you know. I'm pouring it out at 2020 prices, and people aren't snapping it up. It's like, what are you thinking, people? You know, they want to pay, what is it, six and a half, seven grand now, as opposed to the five, eight, five, nine that I'm advertising. It's like, oh, thinking. yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the dates? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we'll talk about that one after the show, mate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get if I can get off my flaming boat, I might join you. Uh, that yeah. sounds fantastic. I can't believe yeah. people aren't jumping at that. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, anyway. what, you, what boat are you going on? Master liverboards. Master, master fleet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. A yeah. good operation. Yeah. yeah, well, my mate's awesome. my mate's the manager over in Thailand, so you know he's um, whenever we've he, he's been a great help going through the COVID period where people have been, you know, g- getting stooged and all that kind of thing. He's just been looking after yeah. us and keep pushing back and pushing back and and holding the prices so that you know we don't get stooged in another way. So yeah, I've had a few no. people drop out, and it's given me the or has afforded me the opportunity to be able to return almost all of their money, um, which is yeah, wow. fantastic. Mm. That's mm. awesome. No, as I mm. said, they uh, they certainly know how to look after people, and I believe that's what all companies should have done, or hopefully have done, through this mm. tough period. Because it, it hasn't just affected the dive companies; it's affected everybody, agents and people who mm. put the trips together. And uh, yeah, we, we we've done what we can, and uh, yeah. Mm. All right, last one. Go for it. I want to go to Cuba, the Garden of the Queens. Ah, okay. I think. Uh, <laughs> just, ah, the number five always gets sort of topped and people talk things up on the boat. And trust me, my bucket list has never been as long as it is now uh, yeah. because I thought, oh, great. I work in the industry. I'll travel. I'll knock a few of these off. But then you get meet people and they go, oh, wow, well, you've got to go to this new place opening up in Cuba. It's fantastic. And oh, have you been to Tahiti? And oh, my God. And, and that's in case. Christmas Island. I want to see the manta rays and whale sharks in the march of the crabs. That could possibly touch the, top the gardens of the queen. But the bucket list never has never got any shorter. And I think at the moment with the lockdowns and everything, it's as longest it's ever been. Um, yeah. just getting me to pick five has been very, very cruel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know how you get away with it, but you know, uh, yeah, God, I think Gardens of the Queen. Um, okay. In, yeah, I, I've heard some really good things about it. Uh, yeah. I know it's a Caribbean and it's Caribbean, uh, but I'd like to see what everyone's talking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Again, I, don't get me wrong. There's, as I said, there's the manta rays and whale sharks in uh, Christmas Island with the March of the Crabs uh, in the Indian Ocean. I was booked up to uh, go over to Sri Lanka to do the blue whale experience uh, back in 2020, and of course missed that. I want to go to Tonga and do the sperm whales. <laughs> there is too much on the bucket list. In fact, you know. I, yeah, okay. Move on. Is there another yeah. question that we can get? There is. To? There's one more question. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we are. Um, incidentally, you can keep your ears open for a future episode by Desmond Lee uh, on uh, diving in Timor Leste for the Blue Whales. Oh. And yes, we will be doing an expedition there at some point. Yum. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, okay, final question. A relatively easy one, I think, but you never know. But how would you describe the dive community to a non-diver? They're like bird watchers who like to blow bubbles. Okay. <laughs> uh, fascinating bunch. Uh, it's a good thing. Everyone has something in common. So when you get mm. on a boat, if you're coming along as a single or just not as a uh, full group booking, you're just booking on as an individual and things like that, um, you're going to make friends. You're there. Yeah. Instantly, everybody has something in common. Uh, everyone's welcoming. Everyone's open. There's. It's not a huge... On a liverboard, it's not a huge drinking thing. Uh, you know, you get people, oh, we're going to drink lots and lots and lots. And then they might have a couple of beers a night, maybe a free glass of wine at dinner. 
and uh, that'll be it. But yeah. then they'll sit down and they'll go through the fish books and help everyone out. And everyone's got, there's that first icebreaker. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, a friendly bunch. Uh, always yeah. a good laugh and very easy to meet new people. You know, yeah. blessed is Paddy, meet people, go places and do things underwater. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It is. No one ever it is. It is really true. Uh, as an instructor, watching that end of the video always used to drive me nuts because everyone would just be sitting there going, oh, what a load of rubbish. I can't emphasize how true it is. I've met thousands and thousands of people uh, because of the job that I do and love. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, I think yeah. it's a great, um, I think it's a great balance. So it's a great, um, it knocks down huge fences because it doesn't matter what you do in career or success if you're on a p liverboards are the best example because you're on a boat there's nowhere to run and hide apart from your cabin and you've got to talk and because you're talking about something and doing something that you, everybody's passionate about everyone's got that, that that level playing field and you become equal yeah 100 percent. knocks down mm. all barriers you know yeah uh yeah i said there's yeah, takes down all barriers altogether, unless you mm. kick up sand in front of a photographer, and then I'll never forgive you. <laughs> oh yeah, and then that, that barrier just becomes a two-mile wall that you you're never going to get across ever again in your life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, to see a wall of a similar size, you'd have to go to China. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, right, I think Dan, uh, we've been babbling on for quite some time now, and Whippersnipper Man's probably going to start again after his coffee break. Um, I think we'll wrap it up and um, and move it on. So um, thank you I can very just much say for having me. Thank you so much for coming on the show, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you at long last, um, and I look forward to uh, many ventures. Hopefully, many adventures, especially exploring. Um, and see what the future holds, eh? Yeah, as I said, it's uh, it's all up, up and down, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, down. Uh, yeah, thank you ever so much for having me on the show. Uh, it's been great to talk about everything that's going on uh, with the company and Papua New Guinea, especially. Uh, yeah. As I said, I. Would like to see you on the boat, and if not, I might be seeing you in the Galapagos. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, that's it for episode two, folks. We hope you enjoyed the adventure, and stay tuned for more exciting episodes to come. Remember, your support means a lot to us, so like, follow, share on whichever platforms is your go-to. And until next time, happy diving. Scuba Goat Under the Sea, the podcast for the inquisitive diver. <laughs>